Okay, welcome to the second part of uh, chapter 9, and in this one we're going to talk about uh, sexual versus asexual reproduction, and then um, hopefully, if I don't run out of time, the uh, prokaryotic cell cycle or life cycle. So, start off really basic, we have um, two terms, and uh, that section says cell division is required for sexual and asexual reproduction. So we'll start with uh, sexual and a, so asexual meaning a, meaning this, this prefix a meaning against or not asexual. Um, and I will just kind of maybe just draw a little diagram. So first of all, sexual, uh, it's what humans do. It's what animals, most animals do. Um, and it requires a mate. Requires mate. So often there are questions like, okay, pros and cons of, of sexual versus asexual reproduction. So one of the cons of sexual is that it requires a mate. And the reason it requires a mate is because there's a process called um, fertilization. Um, and basically fertilization is when the sperm, sperm cell, uh, called a gamete, um, fuses with an egg cell. Uh, also called a gamete, and that's fertilization. The sperm fertilizes the egg. I don't know why I did this strange circle around the sperm cell. It's not supposed to be a cell. Or it is a cell, but I didn't mean to draw it like that. Um, so sexual reproduction requires a mate, and it uh, uses fertilization. And um, I'll put this term gametes here. Gametes. Um, gametes are sex cells, essentially. They're the, they're the cells needed to undergo sexual reproduction. And the two cells are uh, sperm from the male male adult and uh, egg from the female adult and basically they add together and they equal something called a zygote zygote which is a 2n so we have n n then we have a 2n zygote which is essentially a new organism right a new, an offspring and um, so I'll read the sentence here when a sperm fertilizes an egg the resulting offspring once again contains all the full complement the, or the full complement of hereditary information typical of that species. So let's say this species typically, like humans, 2n, let's say that 2n equals 46. That's what humans, 2n equals 46, but the 2 not a z. Okay, so you can just use math to know that n, divided out 2, n equals 23, right? So 23 times 2 is 46. And so the sperm and egg gametes of humans have 23 chromosomes. Oops. 23 chromosomes. And when you add them together, you get a zygote that has, again, uh, 46. So the, the male that donated this sperm had 46. And the female that donated this egg had 46. And each sperm and egg, each gamete, got half. And that's how it works, because you produce multiple gametes, right? And so, now with asexual, um, we'll go with one of the pros of asexual. It does not require a mate. No mate. Uh, you do it by yourself, basically. By yourself. And um, that's that's an advantage. You don't need to waste energy trying to find a mate, waste time, waste energy. You just do it Do it when you, when you need to do it. Um, and reset... Asexual reproduction still uses cell, cell division. It still has to divide cells. And um, the, the most, most commonly, you'll see organisms, um, organisms that do this um, are more, uh, they're, they're more single-celled. So single-celled eukaryotic organisms, such as paramecium, right, right there. Um, and then even multicellular, even multicellular eukaryotics, uh, like Hydra there, down the, the C, the last picture. Hydra, um, so Hydra or um, single, single celled, right? So um, that basically those are the people that go undergo um, asexual, and it really, it's to say that they're they're more simplistic. They're more simplistic organisms, so they can undergo asexual reproduction. And um, you still you still use um, cell division and and um, 
two new cells arise from each pre-existing pre cell, just like we saw with that um, original diagram. We have uh, here, and uh, we have our 2n, 2n, and you go to that, and you go there, and you get two more, right? 2n, 2n, okay? So it still happens. It's just happening without a mate. It's happening without fertilization. So I'll write here, no fertili fertilization. And also, I don't know. Um, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm going to make a guess that asexual is sometimes more efficient in terms of mistakes. I would I would guess that sexual reproduction, um, in sexual reproduction, more mistakes can can occur because you can have um, mistakes in either sperm or egg, and that transfers onto the offspring. Asexual, it seems like it would be a little, a um, little more harmless. Um, and yeah, that's so an interesting type of um, asexual reproduction that they list here is the what the hydra does, which is called budding. And budding is simple. It's very simple. It's basically this hydra um, is undergoing asexual repro reproduction. It's reproducing. It's it's dividing its cells and whatnot. Um, but the new organism or, uh, is called a bud, and it's basically growing off of the parent organism. Um, and then when, when it's ready to sustain its own life and live by itself, it'll break off and live by itself. Um, there are other things called spores that, that are the, it's the same idea. Um, so that's pretty simple. And then I really, really like the um, whole story with the aspen grove, how it's really one tree, but all its roots are interconnected. That's... It's asexual reproduction, but then um, those aspen trees do also drop seeds, um, which are also, which those are that's a form of sexual reproduction. So that's another example. Uh, some organisms can do both. It's not not uncommon. So now I'm going to clear this and go over for the next like eight minutes or so the um, uh, prokaryotic life cycle because that's really interesting. I, I like it, and it's it's simple. So there's two phases you can think of. We have um, cell growth, cell growth phase, and then you have binary fission. I, I love binary fission. It's very simple and easy to understand and really cool to watch on a video if you see bacteria binarily fissioning. Um, so in cell growth, um, what's happening in cell growth is the cell is replicating its DNA, the, the prokaryotic cell again. So let me just do a little remediation. In prokaryotic cells, you're, you have one big chromosome. Let's say this is a prokaryotic cell. Um, your DNA, you don't have a nucleus if you're a prokaryotic cell. So your DNA kind of looks like this. It's, it's just kind of in a loop um, within just free, freely floating. And um, it has that attachment site where it's, where it's attached to the plasma membrane. And that's what the DNA looks like. It's one long circular unit. So it, uh, cell, in, during cell growth, um, the cell is expanding and getting ready for binary fission. Um, so you can, if we can draw it a little wider. And what happens is also this DNA, it replicates. So we have an attachment site here. And we have one there, and we have another exact copy. They're exactly the same. They carry the exact same hereditary information. And so now you'll have two sets of DNA, two essentially chromosomes. Um, they're double helices, and they attach to the plasma membrane um, at very close points. Uh, or they're, they're close to each other. And then in the next step or phase, they don't really name these phases, but in the next phase, um, what, what starts to happen is the plasma membrane starts to pinch off. We see this in mitosis as well the plasma membrane starts to pinch off right down the middle. And then what happens is, since it's been expanding this whole time, um, the cytoplasm in this cell and the cytoplasm in this cell and all the genetic information is identical to the parent. And, but now you just have two. And that's binary fission. And it's really, really simple because prokaryotes don't have a nucleus. It's, it's easy. Um, wow, I definitely just explained binary fission under the cell growth column. Um, that's okay. Um, but that's how easy binary fission is. Um, it took two steps to explain it. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's not difficult to understand. Basically, you're just 
replicating and splitting, replicating and splitting, replicating and splitting. Um, the the cellular or the the cell the plasma membrane does expand a little bit to to separate the two um, DNA, the two um, chromosomes. Um, but yeah, now this gives rise or leads to well, oh, whoops, this leads to two new cells, two new eukaryotic prokaryotic cells. Sorry, and they are daughter cells, right? And they are identical. to each other and to the original parent cell um, because the uh, the DNA like replicated itself identically to, um, to make two copies of itself and what's really interesting about um, bacteria under, undergoing binary fission you, you see um, the bacterium E. coli uh, we, you can watch a video on it on YouTube I'm sure you can find one um, it's really fascinating to watch that um, them undergo binary fission because they do it so quickly. Um, it it their their whole cycle is about twenty minutes to replicate and split and everything. And so you can just see from one from one you know E. coli goes just they're popping off everywhere and and then it expands and like after, uh, before you know it you have this huge colony of, of bacteria. Um, the one thing they mention there at the end is. They do go so quickly, um, and they, they live in your stomach lining, in your intestines, this, this E. coli bacteria, but the environment there is not ideal for them, so they don't actually, you know, thrive. It would be bad if they did thrive, because they're saying that it would, it would outweigh our body eventually, because it goes so quickly. Um, but yeah, that's, that's binary fission, really simple, um, and it's good that we started with something simple, because the rest of Chapter 9 is a little more complicated, so I'll see you in the next video.